BenQ Newa's color calibration software, Palette Master Ultimate, is now available for Windows. So I'm going to download it, install it on the system, and walk you through how to do a calibration with this new software. Let's find out. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. BenQ have launched two new SW hardware calibrated display model. That would be the SW272U and the SW272Q. There's a lot to talk about these two new displays, so I'll leave a link to my launch video in the description below and you can check that out. Along with these two new displays, they have also announced and launched an entirely new color calibration software called Palette Master Ultimate. And in general, I would say that this is going to be the software that is going to give you the ultimate color calibration experience. And it is available for Windows now, which is why we are making this video. So I'll leave a link directly to Palette Master Ultimate webpage in the description below. You can just download the software, install in your system, and then if you like, you can follow along. Now let's talk about some of the equipment I'll be using first. So I have my Windows laptop and I also have a Calibrite Color Checker Display Plus along with the latest SW272Q. I'm just kidding. This is really just the SW270C, but it is fully compatible with Palette Master Ultimate and we're going to use this display to run the calibration. So I'll simply hover on download now once you have arrived at the page and then you would just simply download the application. This is a page that you probably have seen numerous times from downloading Palette Master Element software. Once you're downloaded, install it on the system. What we're going to do now is launch Palette Master Ultimate for the very first time on my Windows system. And you get that animation that happens. Really cool, right? This awesome new software. Perfect. So first we have to go through the end user agreement. Now you can't just check on that box saying you agree right away. You have to scroll all the way down to the bottom first before you can check on that box. Once you do that, you can click on next. This is the part where it asks you to log in or create an account or you can just do the guess and it says that guess is a feature that you can use the software for 30 days afterwards you have to log in. The reason why they want you to log in is because there are ICC profile backup and ICC profile sync features that are going to be available in this program and some other features that BenQ have planned along in the future as well. For now, I'm going to continue as guest and with this in mind, what I am going to do is select my display from the list. I have the SW270C and for my calibrator, the one that I have is the Color Checker Display Plus. So I will choose that from the list. Give it a, just a moment. It will be available. Now, the thing is that color calibration is going to be highlighted in blue right away. This means that you're going to do that function. However, if you want to do something else, you would have to click on these names itself. And it's not quite as clear that these are buttons or not, but they are technically a button for the function that you want to choose. But by default, it's color calibration, so you don't even have to think about it much. From there, click on Start, and this is going to take you through this brand new user interface. At the very top, there are different presets that BenQ have made depending on your creative discipline. And many of these presets are really forward thinking. For example, you have web design in sRGB and also web design in Display P3. You can certainly choose any of these presets and see all the parameters for the preset below. And what you can do is go in and customize all these presets even further. Let's say you like some of the settings, but not everything and you want to customize certain things, you can do that. For now and this demo, what I'm going to do is choose Web Design Display P3 because most of the time I run the calibration in photography, Adobe RGB, but this time let's live on the wild side and just choose Web Design Display P3 and these are the parameters. Luminance 120, White Point D65, Gamut is DCI-P3, Gamma is sRGB, Black Point Absolute Zero, these are all good. But I'm going to go and change a few of the settings, so I'll click on Edit Target. This will pop up another window which allows you to go in and dial all these settings in if you want to. So for luminance, let's say I want to use 100 nits or 100 candela. I'll click on the drop down list and it's not there, however I can choose Custom. But if you notice right below Custom, there is an option for a measurement and in the parentheses is other monitor. That means you can really copy the setting from another monitor and bring it over to this SW. Ideally, you wanna have two of the same SW model. And also this is a topic entirely for another time, but we're gonna go over this feature in depth in the future as well. For now, or which is going to choose custom and dial in the value at 100. White point, I'll leave the same. Gamut, I'll leave the same, but you can also do again 
You can see there, you can choose different gamut and you can measure from other display. Same thing with white point as well, you can do that. And for gamma, I'm going to leave this at sRGB. However, there is an option called enhanced gamma calibration. With enhanced gamma calibration, the whole process is going to take longer, but this is really going to refine the grayscale tracking on the display that gives you even smoother tones. And lastly, black point, I'll leave this at absolute zero. Everything looks good so far, so I'm going to click on done. And the next thing what I have to do right below is choose the calibration mode. This will be the hardware calibration slot on your display. For now, I'm just gonna choose calibration one. Some of you may be familiar with this already, but if you're not, your hardware calibrated display can be, you know, really match to like three different settings. And the settings can be on one computer with three different parameters, or it can be from multiple different computers. For example, a, you know, Windows can take calibration one, Mac can take calibration two and so forth. And I made extensive videos talking about this already. For now, we'll click on next. And it's going to give us a warning saying that we should leave our, leave our display on for at least 30 to 60 minutes. And it recommends that we use this display port or USB type C over HDMI, especially for hardware calibration. Turn off all the OS settings, for example, screensaver, true tone, all those things it's going to affect. On Windows side, I mean, I'll leave a link to the video right below in the description that goes over the settings that you need to turn off on Windows and change. So I definitely recommend checking that out before you go through the calibration process and do not use display mirroring, which obviously we are not doing because I'm seeing something totally different on my laptop display than what I'm seeing on the screen right now. I'll leave everything by default, the ICC profile name. I mean, it tells me everything I need to know about this profile. I will click on next and we are now at the calibration screen. So the first thing it's telling me to do is take the device and rotate the cover from it. The moment I do that, next is now available. I'll click on next. It's showing me the location on the display that I have to place the device on and is also telling me to tilt the display back. And yes, you can calibrate in a bright environment like this. Just tilt the display back, make sure the device is laying flat on the display and you're good to go. I'll click on next again, verify that the device is on the display and I will click on start. So this is going to go through the measurement process and a few things you're going to note as well is that there is a dialog giving you an update on the bottom right of the display. And it's going to constantly change as you know is doing measurement and everything like that it's not really showing anything like of the value or you know the parameters the color but it's just a good animation to see and these are going to go through a few patches and then afterwards we're going to take a look at the result because it's going to run the calibration and then it's going to generate an icc profile and then it is going to validate in session this is really cool so i'll walk you through some of the process for now i'm going to step back and when something important is happening, I'll step in again. Otherwise, we're going to fast forward and speed this video up. So I'm gonna quickly jump in here. If this is the first time that you are running this software, you may be wondering, is only really calibrating 18 patches? Well, in essence, it is. However, the way how BenQ have done this is using the models that they have generated and the algorithm that they have generated, meaning that they have already measured a lot of base models on how the SW, for example, 270C is supposed to perform. And when the calibration is done, it's using all those base models and all the other calibration is done right on top of this value. This way, what you can get is a really good calibration that saves you a lot of time in the process. So now we can see that the ICC profile is being generated, it's going to save to the system, and PMU have already gone in to do the validating or the validation session, and we're gonna be able to get the result really soon. And let's see how this display would perform. Now, another thing that I really like about this new software as well is that BenQ is now validating a lot of the hard to measure and hard to calibrate colors, such as all the darker tones and everything, and also numerous grays as well. So it's no longer just a whole lot of grays and just red, green, and blue. It's a lot of the darker tones in the red, green, and blue that are much harder to calibrate and get the value properly that are being validated as well. All right, once it's done, I will click on check report. I'll bring the device down from the display and 
A lot of things we're getting that are really good here. This really passes the calibration just fine. Right now I am getting the average Delta E at 0.94, which is really awesome. With a max delta E, usually this is just like one patch or one color being at 3.43. That's a little bit high, but considering the fact that this panel is not 99% display P3 coverage, it's just in, you know, like in the low 90s, this does make a lot of sense that, you know, there are certain values, especially the darker ones that may not show up properly all the way. However, it is still passing what delta E value under four. Now I can certainly click on more details and that's going to show me all the color patches, how they are performing and everything else. And if we take a look at the patch that are on the high side, for example, it will be like the red color that you can see right now, that's 3.43, but that is the red 255 in DCI-P3, which is really hard to get right and get with a low Delta E, especially if you don't have a high percentage of display P3. So all this makes sense, but you can also see the value. And from there, you know, you can save the report out, but this is giving us a good picture of what this program can do and some of its capabilities. And I think, like I said, once you have a chance to try this out, you're really going to love it. I know there's a lot more nuances to Palette Master Ultimate that I haven't covered yet, but that will be for a separate video. And we'll be talking a lot more about this software. For now, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new and in our retrust.